Okay, in this series of videos, I will tell you guys about where we can use integrals. And for this video, we will talk about areas. And later on, I will also make videos on the volume, surface area, or length, centroid, etc. But before we start, just want to tell you guys that this right here, they are not going to be super rigorous in a mathematical sense. I'm not going to show you guys the technical definition whatsoever, but let me tell you, they are going to be good. I will show you guys these are the pictures that we have, and these are the labels that we can make, and these are the integrals that we can set up to calculate the area, volume, surface area, our length, centroid, etc. Let's start with this one right here. Suppose you have a curve, and suppose this right here is a graph of a function in terms of x. So we can say y is equal to f of x. And in this case, usually you want to find the area under this curve to the x-axis. So maybe you can just say, I want to go from you know, one x value to the other, let's say from here to here, and usually people put down a to b, and you want to find the area of this region. Well, you see this is a curve. We don't have a geometric formula for this particular curve. So this is what we do. We know how to find areas of rectangle, and it's easy to do. It's just length times width or base times height, up to you. Therefore, I'm going to just first draw a rectangle vertically like this. And the reason it's vertical is because we are given y as a function of x. We are talking about this vertical length right here. Well, well, I'm going to first find the area of this red rectangle. And then this rectangle is supposed to be really, really small. And you're just going to add up all of these rectangles. That's pretty much it. Now, here's the label in time. Here is pretty much the base. And as you can see, from here to here, this is just a small change in the x values. Therefore, we can put this down as dx, okay? the small change in the x-axis. And I also need to find out the height. And the height is, you go from the x-axis vertically up to the curve, and that's precisely the y value. So the area of this red rectangle, like this now, is just y times dx. But when you set up, I recommend you guys to go from right to left sometimes. So I will do that for you guys right here. I'll put down dx, which is this, and then multiply by y. This pretty much represents the area of this red rectangle. But how many of these kind of rectangles do we have? A lot. Well, that's a concept of integrations. We are going to add up all of these rectangles from x equals to a to b. So this goes from x equals a to b. And if you do that, that will give you the area under the curve. Well, this is the x world. Unfortunately, y is not invited, but it's not that bad because you can just replace f of x for y. All right, here is another situation. Maybe you have a curve like this, and for this time, this is not a situation where you have y as a function of x. This is the other way around. Why? Because as you can see, this curve does not pass the vertical line test. Well, it's okay, it does pass the horizontal line test. Maybe you are given that this is x as a function of y, and that's right here, x equals g of y. And in this situation, we want to talk about the area from this curve to the y-axis. So maybe you want to go from one point to the other, let's say from here up to here. And since I used A and B already, of course, let's use C and D. <laughs> and I'm just going to find the area of this region now. Well, well, this time, of course, yes, you can see we kind of just tell our head like this way. You just turn the rectangle the other way. So you draw the rectangle horizontally like this. And notice, I'm not using the left point, left, right point, whatever. Doesn't matter because this is supposed to be really, really small. Right? Doesn't really matter. If you have like a lot of this, infinitely many of them, you can get the whole area. Anyway, this is the picture that we have. This time though, this is going to be my height, or well, maybe the base, depends on how you look at it, but it doesn't really matter. You have to know that this is just a small change amount in the y-axis. So I will label that as dy. It's just the opposite of that, of course. And I also need to know the distance from here to here. 
Well, that's from the y-axis to the curve horizontally. This is precisely the x value. So to get the area of this red rectangle, this time we just do dy times x. Yes, we just integrate that, and you go from y equals c to d, and this will also give you the area of this region. It really depends on what kind of curve that you are given with. And of course, x is not invited in the y world, so you're plugging this right here for the x. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. But pay attention to the way that we talk about the label and things like that. This is going to be super helpful when you are doing some work. Anyway, as always, that's it.